Samantha is a young woman who drank a little before getting pregnant and continues to smoke marijuana. Samantha says she's often anxious, but she hasn't talked with her doctor about it. Smoking weed helps slow down her thoughts and relieves her stress. She has also had some morning sickness, and her friends told her to smoke marijuana to make the nausea go away. Hi, Samantha. I'm Dr. Brown. I'm so pleased that you came in today so that we could start this routine care during this exciting time in your life. It's nice to meet you, Dr. Brown. I'm really excited and interested to learn about being pregnant, what to do, and how to be healthy. Let's go through the health questionnaire that you filled out. It helps us learn about your lifestyle so we can give you the best care. We ask these questions to all patients during their pregnancy. Now, one of the questions is about the use of alcohol or other substances. And sometimes new moms get nervous that sharing that information about their substance use will get Child Protective Services or DCYF involved. But the sharing information about your substance use before, during, or after your pregnancy does not automatically trigger a report to DCYF. Healthcare providers are responsible for or mandated to call DCYF if we think a child is being neglected, abused, or might be at risk. So what that means is that we can have an open and honest discussion about the role that substances play in your life. What you tell me during these conversations is private and confidential. We want to support you to have a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby. So when a mom has her baby, the hospital might test the baby for substances. If a mom is using a non-prescribed substance at this time, then the hospital might consider reporting only if they have safety concerns. The hospital is required to work with the mom to develop a plan to bring the baby home to a safe environment. This is called a plan of safe care. The plan identifies all the resources and support that the mom and baby might need. Again, the hospital will only call DCYF if there's reason to believe the baby is at risk of abuse or neglect or an unsafe situation. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. What questions do you have about confidentiality and reporting? I was going to ask you about that. I don't want to get into trouble or have DCYF knocking at my door because I smoke a little weed. It's really not a big deal and it's better than drinking. This worries many moms, so I like to talk about it early. It's not the fact that you smoke marijuana or use substances that triggers a report. On the screening, you said that you used alcohol and smoked pot socially a couple times a week with friends before you were pregnant. But now that you're pregnant, can you tell me how you're doing? I like to smoke weed occasionally, like when I'm stressed out and feeling, feeling anxious. I, I've also been sick a little and throwing up, and weed helps with that. Otherwise, I don't really feel like eating. But I, I haven't had anything to drink since I found out I was pregnant. That's really helpful. Thanks. I mean, sometimes it's hard to know what information is trustworthy, what's out there is confusing or inconsistent, or everyone has an opinion. Is it okay with you if I share a little information about what we know and don't know about marijuana use during pregnancy? Okay. I, I didn't think using weed occasionally would matter. Many of my friends smoked while pregnant and their babies are okay. Marijuana use is common and some people use it to deal with their conditions. But while you're pregnant, I recommend you avoid all forms of marijuana, including CBD oil. We don't know enough about the impact of marijuana on developing babies. Most of the research that's been done is on smoking marijuana and not on the many other ways to use it. There are studies to suggest that smoking marijuana can put your baby at greater risk of learning and cognitive disabilities, including hyperactivity uh, or having problems with memory and being attentive. Other studies suggest that there's a risk of being born at a low birth weight and needing to go to the NICU. And there are studies that suggest it doesn't increase the risk of these complications. But we do know that all forms of marijuana or THC cross the placenta, which is the organ that transfers nutrients from you to your baby. So one thing is clear, it isn't harmless during pregnancy. We just don't have all the answers. So the safest choice is not to use. What do you think of all that? I never thought I was putting my baby at risk. I actually thought it was better that I eat and have an appetite than to be throwing up all day. 
I'm not sure I can stop completely because I, I have a lot of stress and I'm anxious, but I don't want to put my baby in a position to struggle when it's first starting out. It sounds like you're willing to try. We can work together to help give your baby a healthy start. We have safe medications and alternative strategies to help you cope with the morning sickness and anxiety. Any amount that you can cut down or reduce is a step in the right direction. Can we talk about ways to help you work towards this goal? I'm not saying I can stop completely. Everyone uses it, but I, I want to have a healthy, smart baby. Again, this is great that you're thinking of ways to cut back. Some other things that I like to share with moms about marijuana are that smoking marijuana has many of the same chemicals as smoking cigarettes. And marijuana is much stronger than it used to be, so you get more THC in your system. Again, we just don't have all the answers. To use marijuana responsibly, it's really important that you never drive after you've used. You store it in a safe place so that other children or pets can't accidentally get into it. And now that I've shared all this with you, I am curious, how do you feel? What do you think about making these changes? I mean, on a scale of zero to 10, where would you say you are in terms of being ready to quit? Zero being not so ready and 10 being ready to go. Maybe, maybe a six. I think I can at least start to cut back. I don't wanna give it up completely, but I also, I don't wanna hurt my baby. So just curious, why do you think you're six and not a four? I didn't realize that smoking weed could put my baby at risk for some serious problems. And I, I don't want to be responsible for that. Also, I've, I've never really talked about my anxiety before. I just thought smoking weed was natural and it makes me feel better. I'm, I'm nervous about having this baby by myself and I want it to be as healthy as possible. So those are really great reasons, but what factors might help you go from a six to an eight? I think I just need time to cut back slowly. It's become a habit to smoke weed at night, so I need to cut back just, just a little at a time. I want what's best for my baby. Maybe, maybe I'll use edibles instead so my baby doesn't get the smoke. I really appreciate your honesty and I'm really glad you're willing to work on this. There's so many things to think about when you find out you're pregnant. We can keep talking about this at your next appointment, but the best choice is to avoid all types of marijuana. I understand. It'll take some time. But between now and then, you'll cut back on using marijuana. If you do, you'll use edibles and you won't drive after using and you'll lock it up. Before we finish, I wanted to mention a new resource called The Doorway NH. Calling 211 connects you with resources, guidance, and support to help you. I hope you're feeling better, and I'll see you in a month. Find more details about confidentiality and the plan of safe care in the New Hampshire Espert Implementation Playbook for Perinatal Providers at sbirtnh.org.